All right, guys, we are back at Steve's factory. Aloha. And I'm super excited. I'm picking up my board. It's finally done. Super stoked. Here it is. Here is the beauty. But first, we, before we're going to talk about this board is we kind of got to jump back to where we left off last time because what we've seen, if you guys remember, the board went into this vacuum yep. with the black carbon fiber on it. Lightly glass, not a lot, just a little enough to make it adhesive. And now it looks like this. Yep. And of course, I could have come here uh, two, three more times to go step by step, but we don't have time for that. So we're gonna have a board here that is kind of like in the last stage. Yep. Right, you wanna come over here yep. with me, Steve? And so first is, I kind of kept forgetting is, how do you make the black yellow? Yeah, so what's you the, a, What's the painting process? So it's all resin. Um, with paint, it's kind of like your car, where if you paint it, if it'll scratch your car, it'll scratch your board. And I don't know, I'm always jumping off of rocks and climbing over rails and stuff, so I, I hit my board on things. That's why I like doing it all in resin, because it's really durable. You have a lot of impact resistance from just general wear and yep. tear, nicks and dings, throwing it in your car, jumping off of rocks. Um, so what we have here, the board is black, and then we mix up a ultralight filler in our resin. What it does is it lets us use less resin, get yeah. more volume, and then we add pigment to that. And then pigment. Yeah, okay. that pigment gets brushed all over the board, and then we sand it. So anywhere you see that's black is actually the, the top layer, the color being sanded off, gotcha. and the black is coming through. And here comes hence the term brushed carbon. Yeah, exactly. Because you're brushing those pigments, so you resin first, and then you brush those pigments on. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. I actually have a board over here that's not sanded yet. Okay. This is a downwind prototype board I'm doing for myself, but you can kind of see where this is rough. This is uh, okay. It yeah. hasn't been sanded. This is just the the filler, the resin, and the pigment on there, and it's all brushed over. And there. the other side is still. And the other uh, side has not been done. The other yet. side is still okay. And now, of course, you have to do the other side again. Also, yeah. blah blah blah. So this story. is right off the bag. This is what it looks like. Yeah. This is after we do some color. Yeah. And then once it gets sanded, that's where we end up with this look with kind of a, a little bit of black and some of the color. Which I kind of like because it makes it kind of grungy. Yeah, it gives I like it kind, the, of kind of a, like that grungy look. Feel. Okay, cool. Well, here you have it. Now you know how and where the brushed carbon look comes from. And then at this board to jump just back real quick, he just put on another thin layer of carbon fiber here. Uh, no, not carbon fiber, pardon, um, glass, fiberglass. Yep. fiberglass and it gets glass lightly, and then after that, uh, what's last, the last coat? Yep, then we'll do a hot coat, so just uh, a little bit of resin over the top to kind of fill the gaps in the weave. That gets sanded flat, and you see that finished board over there. That's our, mm. our final product, where you have this real mirror. Oh, also super cool, I like finish. the, I like that kind of finish with the, the camo. Camo kind of fiberglass. Yeah. Cool machine here. So this one. Nice, nice. And then we have the inserts here, they go in last. Yep. Guys, see that? Some people have that. I chose also to do uh, the foot strap inserts, although I'm not quite sure whether I'm ever going to use them or not. I hope so. Okay, there if you need but if them. not, my daughter will use them for sure. But if I need it, they're here. So there you have it. And now, uh, one thing that I'm not really good at it, uh, or he's going to help me, is we're going to put on the deck pad. And now we're going to just put you guys over here. And we're gonna put on the deck pad. All right, another moment of truth here is how much does this thing weigh? 44 liters at how much? Wait, let's see. With the pads. With the pads. Eight grams. Pounds. What? How much is that in grams? All right, so that's 3,795. And everybody, except for maybe people in this country, know that is 3.795 kilos. And I think that is pretty darn good. Super light, can't wait to try it. Now, before we uh, move off here, we'll talk real quick for everybody a little bit about underwater shapes of boards. 
because I think that's always something that's a topic that is being discussed. And let's have just Steve at it. Steve, tell us a little bit about the importance of underwater shapes of boards. We have channels, we have uh, something like, uh, uh, what do you call that? A double concave in a the double nose. Double concave, thank you. So yeah, bottom shape does matter, especially because every time you foil, you start off in the water. Unless you're like dock starting, then it really doesn't. But rather you're winging, proning, kiting, you're starting in the water. So the board has to begin touching the water. So this design is really focused on accepting water into the board and letting it flow out the back while creating lift under your front foot to help that foil get up and break free. If you see the way that the board sits on a flat surface, see how it kind of rocks a little bit side to side? Absolutely, yes. It's because the, this is essentially shaped kind of like a displacement hole on a boat. Um, and what that'll do is help push water to the sides of the board and allow it to release all the way through this rail and have a really nice sharp rail and a channel to decrease the drag on the back two thirds of the board. So what it'll do is it'll, it'll get you up on plane quicker and it'll get your board up to that takeoff speed for your foil a little bit faster. Gotcha. While we're at takeoff, and this might be something a whole video we can do, um, also maybe would be worth a whole video. Um, take off techniques for wing foilers. Yeah. People are yanking their foils. What are you doing? You're a pretty, uh, this guy actually rips, just by the way, this guy rips on wing foils, I've seen him. What, what's a good technique? What should I do? Like people are pumping this thing around and all of that, quick word than that. Yeah, um, everyone's different, right? There's a lot of different ways to start. Uh, I personally get my feet on top of the board, I sink it, and then I go from there. I. Uh, some people can start from their knees or sitting on the board. I find that, I mean, I'm really tall. I'm six foot four, super long legs. It's hard for me to get my feet up underneath me when I'm sitting and be yeah. able to stand up. So that's why if I submerge the board, get my feet on top of it, it's just easier for me to go. The downside to that is you need more wind and more power to be able to pull yourself up out of the water. Whereas if you're sitting on it or kneeling on it, your board's already kind of on top of the water and it's, it's a little easier to get going. Yeah. So every style of water start has pros and cons. Um, for me, it's more my, my body geometry that's my limiting factor. Um, but yeah, I think you kind of cool. just gotta try it and figure it out. Here we have it, and that is exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go try it and figure it out. That'll be the topic for the next video, where we're gonna look different board sizes again. That is always interesting. And how I can uh, manage myself down to this 44 liter board here, excuse me, 4 li 40 liter, no, 44, 44 liter. Yes, 44 yeah. liter, and it is 44 long. So 44 at 44, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Go, man. Awesome.